Hello class. In the previous lecture, we have seen what is the rate of motorization and how it gives a positive and negative effect on the environment and on the other subsequent things. Okay. So in this lecture, we will suppose to see uh, what is what are the government policies are defined and done in order to reduce the if three negative effect which we have seen in the previous lecture that is air pollution air and noise pollution fuel consumption and accidental death so to pull out these three negative effect of the motorization what are the government footprint and what are the oem footprint that we supposed to see step by step in our in this our lecture so the develop the, that is the first footprint by government is nothing but the development of emission norms based on the rate of motorization okay so here based on rate of motorization we supposed to describe a uh, emission norms okay so what is the motorization we have seen already but based on motorization how they forecast their emission level because as i told you the government calculate a future rate of motorization that is what will be the rate of motorization after the 15 year or after the 10 year so it means what is the population of automobile on indian road they supposed to calculate and on that basis they will calculate if we are not developing or modifying new norms then what will be the pollution level in india on that basis they they start to develop their norm in order to pull pull down that emission level that pollution level that accident accident level or whatever the accident death level okay for that purpose they supposed to develop a norms related to the emission related to the safety okay related to the fuel consumption okay okay so the, those are the norms is developed on the basis of motorization they forecast for the future on the basis of uh, proposed motor rate of motorization okay so Uh, the first step was uh, the first step uh, done by the uh, indian government that is the first emission norms were introduced in india 1991 for petrol and 1992 for diesel vehicle so before 90s there was no emission norms was present in india okay it was in europe country but not in india because the rate of motorization in india are not that much had to develop a air pollution in 90s and no one was was bothered for, uh, uh, for the air pollution in those days so it was before 90s so uh, it it was firstly developed uh, introduced in india in 1991 for petrol and 1992 for diesel vehicle but on 29th april 1999 the supreme court of india ruled that all vehicle in india have to meet euro 1 norms emission norms or india 2000 emission norms but if you see in the first day in 1991 and 1992 norms emission norms for petrol and diesel was introduced after the in, after the uh, introduction of those norms it was not mandatory right at that uh, point of history only after the 8 to 9 year supreme court make it mandatory for vehicles okay but till 1999 it was not mandatory so during uh, the during the period of that 8 to 9 years it was just a uh, slackness uh, there is a slackness in rules okay because it it is called as a buffer buffer time because whenever we are introducing the any emission norms to digest that norms by oems because whenever we are developing a emission norms company have to think on it and company uh, that oem need to uh, develop a subsequent technology in order to um, in order to obey that norms or in order to follow that norms because definitely if i suddenly saying from tomorrow on was don't you are not allowed to emit that much percentage of carbon dioxide in environment and definitely to avoid uh, uh, excess uh, amount of emission of carbon dioxide you have to develop your technology so uh, for that development we have to give a time to oems okay so similarly here also in 1990 there was introduced but in 99 1999 it was made it was made mandatory so that is a buffer time given to the oems but 
it was applied euro 1 or india 2001 because at those days uh, india is not having their, their own norms for emission level so they are just using a european norms as uh, india 2000 uh, they was used india 2000 so euro 1 and india 2000 are 1 is to 1 only name is different all the emission levels are same as that of the european emission norms 1 after that euro 2 was mandatory in ncr by april 2000 so in 99 they was they they made euro 1 mandatory over uh, across the country and just after the one year euro 2 norms made mandatory in ncr region only so, ncr is nothing but the national capital region nothing but the delhi so in delhi they made euro 2 norms mandatory just after the one year of this judgment okay so uh, this these norms are only made for the uh, mandated for the specific region of India, no, not to overall country. Okay, but the car maker were not prepared for this transition, and they sub and in a subsequent judgment, the implementation date of Euro 2 was not enforced. Okay, so as I told you here, 1991 and 1992, the norms was introduced first. But they were they were they made mandatory in 1999. So here also, just after the one year of uh, Euro one mandate man, making making uh, or uh, after the enforcement of uh, Euro one uh, uh, Euro one uh, the, after one year Euro two was uh, made mandatory. But OEM was not ready to digest that technology or develop that technology within a one year so subsequent subsequent judgment of supreme court the, they uh, they they said that it is not mandatory as we are not ready for to, uh, to develop that technology in, uh, or we have not developed that technology in the in that much short sp uh, span of time okay and after that the Indian government appointed one committee to map emission norms for Indian traffic under the guidance of Mr. Malchekar. So in, uh, before that India was not having its own emission norms so they, uh, they formed one committee okay, in order to map uh, Indian emission norms okay, as per the Indian traffic condition under, under the, uh, as per the Indian tra traffic uh, behavior. Okay, so uh, in 2002, the Indian government accepted report submitted by the Malchikar Committee. So till 2002, the Malchikar submitted its uh, Malchikar Committee submitted their report, and the committee uh, proposed a roadmap for the rollout of Euro-based emission norms for India. So in in that committee a report, they proposed uh, India's own emission norms. Okay, before that we are supposed to use a euro norms only. Okay, it re that it recommended as a phased implementation of future norms with the regulation being implemented in major cities first and extended to rest of the country after a few years. So what in uh, what mentioned that uh, uh, report? It recommended as a phase implementation. Phase implementation means if any norms we supposed to introduce emission norms we supposed to introduce in india so first of all use that norms in phases first don't directly use that norms to entire country first of all try those new emission norms on the basis of their uh, uh, effectiveness to selected region only okay when we are applying those norms for selected region okay so it is it is not a uh, uh, it, it 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 may be called as an experiment okay so if you are using that norms at completely country level at one cell uh, one instance so we are there is no any uh, there is no any chance of improvement so first of all at experiment level you should apply that new emission norms for specific region of your country so basically whatever the norms introducing in the uh, indian government uh, new norms in introducing in Indian government that for uh, that are first of all applied or experimented on metro countries like Delhi, Kolkata, Bangalore, and Mumbai. Okay, after the uh, after monitoring the effectiveness of th that those norms, 
it get applied on country level further as we have seen in the previous history the enforcement or the mandate if any norms made mandatory then it it become difficult to cope up with those norms because technology was not ready that time okay so similarly here also whenever we are tra transforming B, uh, from ps4 to ps6 uh, by skipping the ps5 there was also too much difficulty uh, have uh, had faced by the oems because we are directly uh, have uh, doing a frog jump from ps4 to ps6 okay so uh, technology have to be uh, developed by oem in order to cope up with that emission level okay so the, uh, even though due to uh, due to such a technology some of the oems have to discontinue their diesel way a uh, diesel engine also okay because uh, they are not ready to launch their diesel engine uh, which uh, satisfy the ps6 storm so they require a more time to develop ps6 diesel engine so they are they are they might discontinue but it is it is about india only okay it may be in africa maybe in korea uh, not korea as korea is a, a developed near to the uh, developed country or uh, developing country if you talk about the south korea sri lanka okay after that in indonesia those country are not bother about uh, the emission level right now because their economy is lower than the india so they are ready to accept those uh, uh, high uh, f uh, emission uh, high emitting uh, engines means uh, as I uh, told you here, some of the uh, OEMs discontinue their diesel uh, engines because of that BS6 norm. But they are discontinue that diesel engine for India, but for Indian market. But they are manufacturing the same engine for Africa because in Africa, whatever in Africa, uh, the emission norms uh, was uh, enforced right now are very very uh, far uh, behind from the uh, behind the uh, emission level norms used in india because their economy is very poor as compared to the india uh, indonesia also they are backward than india in terms of economy so they not afford more money to buy a bs6 uh, uh, compliant vehicle okay so compliant vehicle they are not uh, supposed to buy those vehicles so they are try to uh, they are ready to purchase a old technology vehicle that is bs3 bs4 vehicle they're supposed to use it today okay so uh, it doesn't mean uh, if india doing a bs6 then all the uh, country over the globe are supposed to have a uh, bs6 norms not like that is particular to india it is depend on the uh, our uh, uh, acceptance level of uh, customer okay because definitely the customer have to buy the vehicle and if cost we are uh, if we are quoting a cost too much okay definitely no uh, no one customer supposed to buy your vehicle even though uh, it is depend on the government policy uh, that pollution policy okay so uh, if you talk about the uh, developed country like america definitely their emission norms may be higher than our our norms so this is only related to the India. What we have, we are, we supposed to um, study in in this lecture. Okay. After the, based on the recommended uh, recommendation of the committee, the national auto fuel policy was announced officially in 2003. Because we uh, we are only developing a, a technology on the basis of those policies or those emission norms. But if I develop that machine to uh, have the low emission level we also have to use uh, some pure fuel also or we can say more filtered fuel also so uh, it is th those emission norms are not uh, not achievable only by oems or that automobile manufacturer it is it to achieve that emission norms a fuel industry national uh, that auto fuel industry also have to work because they also have to uh, develop their fuel such a way which can be employable in in the, in those bs6 compliant compliant vehicle or compliant engines because fuel is very bs4 fuel is different and the bs6 fuel is different because whenever we compare the bs4 and the bs6 well, definitely some technical difference uh, technical change modification is there in terms of the compression level in terms of the uh, surface to volume ratio okay in terms of the uh, of fip pressure that is fuel injection pump pressure so definitely your fuel properties need to be enhanced 
in order to employ that fuel into new technology so similarly uh, some norms was developed for autofuel industry uh, autofuel industry also okay and the policy also create, created a guideline for autofuels reducing of pollution from older vehicle and r&d for air quality data creation and health administration okay so some policy also develop some even norms also develop for the autofuel industry because not only auto mobile manufacturing industry have to perform uh, work on their technology the autofuel manufacturing industry also have to work on it so autofuel manufacturing industry is nothing but that uh, uh, ref uh, fuel refining station that is indian oil okay hindustan petroleum reliance all those have to work on their fuel okay so this uh, the norms are developed for them also okay so this is the policy of uh, uh, footprint of our government uh, now if you see the history uh, how the uh, norms was developed emission norms was developed in india then this those are the standards over quoted over here that is india 2000 norms which is equivalent to euro 1 was applied in 2000 on the nation wide on the nation wide it is applied on 2000 after the getting a uh, after getting a report from that uh, committee kalsekar as per their recommendation that is phase implementation in uh, uh, phase implementation on that basis the bharat to norm was firstly introduced in 2001 only for the limited area like in the ncr that is national capital region mumbai kolkata and chennai after 2003 2004 it was applied for ncr plus 3 13 cities okay so the, those 13 cities like mumbai kolkata chennai bengaluru so those are those 13 cities including ncr in 2003 2004 it is it is for ncr and 13 cities same okay after that in 2005 2004 it is applied for nationwide so in in phase manner they applied bharat stage 2 not at a one one uh, at a one announcement they are not applied those uh, bharat stage to new emission norms to nationwide as per the recommendation of the committee similarly bharat stage for bharat stage 3 also uh, they did a same way in 2005 and 2004 they applied a uh, bharat stage 3 to ncr and 30 cities and in 2010 4 2010 formula april 2000 2010 April 2005, April 2005, April 2003. So we are, uh, or we uh, we can say we are going as per the financial year. Emission norms are applied as per the financial year only. Okay. So April 2010, we are applied uh, Bharat Stage three norms on nationwide. Similarly, Bharat Stage four, uh, into uh, April 2010, it applied for NCR and 30 cities and. April 2017 Bharat stage 4 was applied nationwide okay so uh, in, uh, from the uh, April 2017 BS4 two wheeler was compulsory uh, or uh, uh, was made mandatory and all BS3 vehicle we have uh, purchased on the discount level in 17 April 2017 April okay so uh, because after after the uh, April 2017, all two-wheeler which is uh, developed on the BS3 norms was dis uh, will was discontinued after that date. So all sale uh, dealers have sale out all their BS3 stock with a discount. So we have taken that advantage. So this is the transition of what uh, what how it affect on the dealer uh, uh, economy and how it dealer on effect on the uh, what, uh, what we can say customer economy. Okay, they are getting a too much uh, discount customer side, and seller have to lose their uh, margin by giving their sell out or sell out their uh, vehicle with a uh, with discount. After that, BS five Euro five norms is skipped, so it is not used. Bharat stage five norm was not introduced, and if we have directly introduced a BS six norms in current year April, but it was. uh firstly introduced in it uh, april 2018 in delhi okay uh in april 2019 it is apply, applied for ncr including 14 14 country uh, 14 cities and april 2020 in current year it is applied to nationwide okay 
so till here we are uh, right now to the, that is april 2020 we are running right now ps6 vehicle and it is now mandatory okay it is mandatory for diesel vehicle and it is mandatory for petrol as well so it is nationwide applied so this is the history overall uh, we have uh, seen uh, for our uh, emission norms okay now you'll see the what are the different standards so four wheel vehicle there are uh, on the basis of the uh, class of vehicle okay whether it's four wheel vehicle or whether it is a two wheeler vehicle whether it's a three wheeler vehicle on that basis and even though the cross vehicle weight on the basis of gross vehicle weight the emission levels are decided or we can say on the basis of footprint the what is the footprint of vehicle footprint or to calculate the footprint of vehicle we just need to multiply the road uh, the wheelbase uh, of vehicle by uh, wheelbase of uh, sorry wheel track of vehicle so we just need to multiply wheelbase Mul uh, wheel base but wheel track so we are getting a fo uh, footprint of vehicle so on the basis of footprint or on the basis of the gross vehicle weight we supposed to decide our emission level okay so in 1991 uh, that is our first norms uh, those are the emission level here you can see co sc sc plus nox and nox so co is nothing but the carbon monoxide sc is nothing but the unburned hydrocarbon SC plus NOx uh, some somewhere used to show SC plus NOx okay so in that case NOx was absent and SC was absent so here 3 uh, gram per kilometer so unit uh, here emission unit is nothing but a gram per kilometer so 2 gram per kilometer travel of that vehicle okay we supposed to uh, we, are, we are allowed to emit the unburned hydrocarbon okay similarly here 4.36 gram per kilometer NOx can be emittable so these are those are the norms here euro, euro 1 euro 2 euro 3 euro 4 and here 1 2 3 is nothing but the again class of vehicle whether your vehicle is uh, below 1 liter then it is a first category if your vehicle in between uh, uh, above 1 liter but uh, below 3 liter okay then it is second and if your vehicle above 3 liter so it is a th third class so the uh, third uh, class of vehicle okay so this is under euro 3 they have or category or first level class vehicle second class vehicle third class vehicle on the basis of cc okay here on the basis of gross vehicle weight and here further classification inside it that is on the basis of the cubic capacity okay so those are the emission level in gram per kilometer now this is a for two and three uh, wheeled vehicle okay it is up to the bs6 up, uh, uh, this those are the date of application or uh, enforcement of emission norms okay and these are those are the emission level again for the three wheel vehicle and the for two wheel vehicle in uh, the unit for emission is gram per kilometer here also gram per kilometer so those are the emission level which uh, are uh, defined by the uh, uh, our national uh, government okay so on that basis we supposed on to achieve those norms the oem have to develop their technology okay after that this is the emission standard for light duty diesel vehicle again it's a unit is gram per kilometer light duty diesel vehicle so here also euro 1 euro 2 and these are those are the subclasses okay on the basis of cubic capacity